Today we will learn about mean measure of central tendency. To represent a group of numbers, many times we need an appropriate number that represents a group of observations. Such a number is called the central tendency of the group. We use different types of central tendency to interpret different types of data such as mean, median and mode. In this video, we will discuss the mean. We usually know the mean by the name of average. It is also called arithmetic mean. The mean of observation of a group is the number obtained by dividing the sum of all observation by the number of observations. For example, the mean of given data is 22. We represent mean as x bar and read it as x bar. If we are given n observations like this, then their mean can be written as. For our convenience, we can represent the sum of observations in this way, where Greek letter sigma denotes summation, xi is a variable where i is any natural number from 1 to n. We read it as summation of xi where i ranges from 1 to n. Here, n represents the number of observations. With its help, we can now represent the mean in this way. We use this formula to obtain the mean of the data. Now, consider that in observations, frequency of x1 is f1, x2 is f2, x3 is f3, similarly xn is fn. Then, we can get the sum of all observations in this way and the number of all observations in this way. Remember that here n represents the total number of observations. In this way, now the mean of these observations can be written in this way. With the help of this formula, we can find the mean for given ungrouped frequency distribution. Now, let's understand some characteristics of the mean. For example, here are the heights of some children. To understand what their average height is, we have to find the mean of all children's height. The mean is the only measure of central tendency that takes into account the total value of the data. Therefore, if we require a scale showing the reflection of the total value, in that case, the mean would be a suitable measure. Similarly, if we have to compare the performance of two batsmen, then it will be more useful to compare them by finding the mean of their runs. Here are some observations. Their mean is 20. If we change the observation 29 and write 7, then with the new observation, mean is 18. In this way, the mean depends on all observations. If there is a change in an observation, then the mean also changes. Suppose in a year, three districts of a state receives rainfall of 3 cm, 8 cm, 9 cm, due to which those districts had to face drought. And in fourth district, the rainfall was 380 cm due to which the districts faces flood. If we find the average rainfall in 4 district, it will be 100 cm. Looking at this, would it be correct to say that there has been good rainfall in 4 districts? No, it would be wrong to say. The extreme value here is 380 cm, which is much larger than the other observations. It has the most effect on the mean. Similarly, peak values have greater effect on the mean. By observing observations here and their mean, it can also be said that if the peak value in observations is too large or too small, 
then the mean does not represent the best of observations in situations when the peak value is too large or small median and mode helps us which we will read about in subsequent videos so today we learned about mean as the measure of central tendency in the next video we will learn about another measure of central tendency that is median